Hey guys, uh, so I'm up a little bit past my bedtime, so if I'm a little uh, out of it. Um, conference reports last uh, response to me, he was basically contesting my, what I was saying about uh, about, about Whitehead's ideas of, um, of eternal objects and sort of the idea of the platonic forms. Um, and I don't blame people for contesting those. I mean, it's, it, it is sort of a difficult concept to work with. Um, and, and I think you need a, a sort of, you can't arrive at these things through, through reason alone. You need a little bit of an intuitive push in order to kind of see the, the reality of it. But, you know, it, it, it did kind of, this discussion did get me thinking a little bit about archetypes. And particularly Matt's response, which I thought that was great about about, about symbols. Um, you know, before I was ever into Whitehead or Kim Wilbur, uh, before on the internet, I, I was into Carl Jung, and uh, by extension Joseph Campbell. Um, and so archetypes are, have a very uh, deep meaning for me, and I and I, I definitely um. I definitely find this sort of concept fascinating. Um, the idea that sort of yeah, you know, we 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 live in we live in details, but but think in um, generalities. In a sense, there uh, yeah, and and I guess yeah, there's there's an interesting debate to be had over whether the specifics precede the generalities or if the generalities precede, precede the specifics. And I and I th and I think it's kind of there to me. There's no clear answer in that. I think there's um, it's a little bit of both. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I find it interesting if if you read Ken Wilber's book Sex, Ecology, and Spirituality, he has an interesting section where he talks about two different kinds of archetypes, Jungian and Platonic. And yeah, the the idea is you know when Carl Jung's idea is about the collective unconscious and stuff. The idea is uh, as archetypes are sort of built up over time, they become ingrained into the collective unconscious. Um, and so Jung's archetypes reach deep into the past. Yeah, you know, with, with things like the wild man, the Joker, you know, think, things things like archetypes that get, that are as old as human nature. Um, these sort of harken back to a deep subconscious past, and, um, and so in a sense, I think I think those are those are sort of archetypes are formed through sort of pattern and repetition over time, over you know, mil the millennia of, of of human development. But I said, you know, there is no, you can't have any archetype of enlightenment. When you get, uh, you know, by going back into the ancient past, um, because you know that, because you know, re regression is not enlightenment. Um, and so instead, he, he kind of turns to Plato, in looking at uh, a different kind of archetype, a kind of archetype that that moves us forward into you know higher levels of realization. Uh, yeah, you know, and that's and, and that is kind of what what Plato's form, what the Platonic forms were about. As Plato was talking about uh, these Platonic forms as uh, being sort of beacons that you know, uh, for uh, for Plato, I guess you know the sort of spe specific manifestations of these forms on Earth are sort of perversions of their ideal cause. And I don't quite believe that, but. I do kind of like Whitehead's interpretation of that with the idea of um, eternal objects, uh, you know, and, and the idea that you know you have that there's this vague sense of a certain concept. It it kind of precedes any any specific notion of of what you're trying to create, but there's a sort of a feel, a vibe. That you're trying to uh, of of something that you're trying to achieve, and that is that is kind of like the platonic form of it. It's the sort of um, 
you know, it doesn't necessarily have a shape or a color or something, but it but it but it has a certain uh, a certain presence to it. And and so and so I've the more I think about it, the more I the more I I do believe in some form of platonic forms. I, I yeah, Matt made a, made a video a while back about the platonic forms. I so I, I think there there is some sense in which certain different unspecifiable ideals kind of move us forward, uh, and yeah, they become these archetypes take specific forms through you know, what Whitehead calls uh, hybrid prehensions, um, where you take things that are sort of specific to the Earth's Earth and sort of combine them in a way that they represent these archetypes. Um, and that's how you get different um, pantheons of different religions, like Hinduism or the Greek pantheon or Babylonian gods or whatever. Or in Christianity and Judaism, you have the, the, the uh, different angels, different order of angels, orders of angels and stuff. Um, and then it's also interesting, I remember I read somewhere that Jung did not believe there was an archetype of God because God was the source of all archetypes. God was you know, the the one presence behind all all other archetypes. Um, I suppose, I think Freud would kind of disagree with that. For Freud, I think God was the great breast in the sky, you know, the, the, the mother, the mothering uh, womb of the universe that uh, and I, I definitely have experience with that archetype um, but it's interesting there's some uh, quote from Whitehead where I, I don't remember it exactly but there's something about you know, it is as true to say that uh, the world that God is one and the world is many as to say that the world is one and God is many um, and so I, th I think the, these sort of platonic archetypes, the the the, the eternal objects, in a sense, are, are kind of a sort of manifestation of God along different, you know, to do a certain, use a sort of new age terminology, along different rays of light, and um, yeah, I mean, in in Kabbalistic teaching, you know, different archangels and different angels are all different manifestations of God. It's God as this particular energy or as this particular energy. And they all do the, the, the duty of like, of like sort of calling us forward to, towards a certain, uh, realization or towards a, towards a certain, high, uh, manifestation of, uh, of greater depth, uh, and greater beauty. Um, and in a sense, you know, God does that in all its forms. That's that's good. what what Whitehead conceived of God is doing is, is God is the one who sort of, uh, for Whitehead, God kind of gives order to the eternal objects so that he, he presents the the subject with uh, his different eternal objects in a certain ordering that that allows the subject to understand what, you know what is best for them at the time what uh, sort of opportunity give will allow them to, towards. Uh, to achieve some sort of trans self transcendence, and so, um, so in his, but in his, in a sense, I kind of uh, include the the eternal objects as part of God. You know, that God is that which encompasses all of these different archetypes, um, and transcends them. So, um, I, I guess that's my thoughts for now. Peace.